How you doing? We got a storm coming in tomorrow. But it looks like it might come in just a little bit right now. Uh, real overcast. Thought I'd better get a little more wood cut. One thing I've never had too much of is wood cut. And so we're going to do it. This, I've got Andy's 61 here. Beautiful saw. I actually built it for his daughter. And uh, I've had this just a little while here. I've been running it. If you want to know the truth, I don't want to send it back, Andy. I, I like the saw, but we'll get it right in the mail. This last time I'm going to run it. This is a loyal saw. Excellent work saw. This ain't a crazy build. It's solid build. That's what it is, solid. But it is a really, really nice example of a 61. It really is. Um, I'll be splitting some of this up. I gotta find something easy to split. I don't wanna be hacking and whacking on camera. I, I can split anything. Because if I can't do it with an ax, you know the deal. Rip, rip. I've got a ax here that I'll actually be using. It's a Kelly Vulcan, four pound head. And uh, this is one that the Buck and Billy did with me. For me, uh, I use it a lot. I, I mean, a lot. I haven't used it lately. I see it's starting to get a little surface rust on it. So I thought I'd better shine it up a little bit. And once it gets shined up, throw a little oil on it. Uh, this was one I keep undercover on the back porch. So you get, you get, you can't keep them inside, guys. It dries the darn handles out. That's a bamboo handle right there. That's, uh, well, I'm going to tell you what, I really like it a lot. Bucking did a nice job on it, I, and I appreciate it a lot. So hopefully you guys will get something out of this video that, that you really like. And I get some firewood cut. We got some pretty neat builds coming up. i tell you what I got. I picked up uh, a steel, one of them MS191Ts. It's the pre-runner to the 192 and then the 200. And I'll tell you what I found out. That 200T, I know why that's popular. That's a severely hot-rotted small saw. Well, this one is a, is physically the same size, but it is 46 millimeter bore. It's, or, or it's four, let, let me get this straight. It's 46 cc's instead of what I believe the 200 is 30. So, although it doesn't have the, the uh, intensity that the 200's got, I understand they have a lot of torque. If, it ends up being a good runner stock. We just might port it. Yeah, right now I can't, but it's it's a future. It's a future thing. That's what I'm looking at.
not so much. I really, really do. I'll let you just go ahead and watch this process. You get to see an old man and old woman just do our firewood thing of our How have you guys been? We live in the northeast. You're going to have a snowstorm. At least we are. It's trying hard to snow right now. Supposed to be snow tomorrow. But what you're doing today? We just kind of work at it nice and slow. Don't get in a hurry. Hey, I like it. Couldn't have planned that better. You notice when you get old, you use your axe as a cane, you know. You just ain't going to beat this axe. I'm sorry. That bamboo handle does not throw vibration in your hands. All of the kinetic energy goes in the wood. Of course, those of you that ever split mountain ash know you can do it just with a one hand. It's that easy. This ain't no feed, is it? No, it's not. It's just like that. I guess I shouldn't take a kitty stroke on one, should I? I've never seen a wood to split as easy as this stuff. If you got something to split easier, all you need is a butter knife. That'd be kind of a neat thing to see, wouldn't it? Somebody splitting with a butter knife. Or once there. That saw runs awful nice at 61. But I'll tell you what the worst thing is cutting that log pile. You make four or five cuts, it's a little dull. You make 10 and 12, it's a little more dull. As you progress, you know, they make about that many cuts right there. You gotta sharpen. Some logs aren't too bad. That mountain ash, uh, as far as ash goes, that's probably the hardest ash we have here. Uh, I'll tell you what I like cutting is I like cutting ash when it's standing in the spring. Well, it cuts nice actually, even that stuff. But the uh, ash we have along the bottom ground, you know, near the rivers and stuff, grows real fast. Um, it still splits quite easy, but. That mountain ash is real dense. It really is. And when that dries out, that log's been down over a year. Once that dries out to the point that is right there, oh, my, my, my. That tension that's in there, just it just wants to split. Uh, it's really crazy. Okay, guys, here, guess what I got here? Um, kind of a unique saw. I didn't even know anything about them. Uh, MS-191T. It's an intact, complete, in good shape. I ain't no tree climber. I was wondering what that unlocked. That's for hanging it when you're climbing. It has, this is apparently somewhere where it started for the 200T. They come out with a 191. 
and then the 192, and then the 200. The T 200 is the one that is iconic. Everybody just wants that. This is one pound heavier than the 200. But I'm going to tell you something. The 200T is really a factory hot rod. It really is. Um, apparently, these had a lot of torque, and I'll tell you why. They're 46 and a half cc's. The 200T is 35 cc's. The reason I even questioned it is when I had to plug out, this coil's bad, okay? But guess what we got right here? We got a new coil. Had a heck of a time getting a coil for this. When I had that plug out and I shined my light in there, I, I, that, that little... That little 200T got a tiny little piston. I seen this one was much bigger. It's like, what the heck? And so I done some research and figure out what we actually had here. Now, this saw is going to run. I know it's going to run. It's got great compression. I got the coil. It has a different handle than the 200, but you know... That might not be all bad, having that handle wrapped around like that. That just might not be all that bad. I got the idea that's uh, a good thing. Okay, now listen. I got some more parts coming from Sawzilla. Uh, saw parts. Uh, gonna be some pretty interesting stuff showing up. Mostly 372 stuff, because uh, I've got a couple I gotta do. And I, I'm low on parts i really am i got another order from ryan i made today uh a fairly significant order so we'll have an unboxing if you want saw parts go see ryan he'll give them to you um what's nice about this deal with sawzilla and uh and uh, wolf creek saw shop is they have different stuff okay like i can buy the pro line carbs which I've had good luck with. Uh, very good luck, actually. And uh, I don't think I've had any not work. And at a lot cheaper price than OEM carbs. But they have plastics, uh, gas tanks, stuff like that, which Ryan doesn't carry none of that stuff. He carries more of the hard parts for inside the saws and mufflers and stuff. So I, I want you to... Uh, when you're looking for parts, you want plastics and one thing or another, go, just go check out what they have over there on their site at uh, Sawzilla. And the same thing at Ryan. Just go see what he's got. Uh, tell both of them Iron Horse sent you. Um, we have to learn this together. We really do. You know, we have to find out where do we get parts for obsolete saws. Or don't, let's say you got a saw that you'd like to make run. But you don't want to get $298 in a darn thing because you know it's not worth it. Go get a highway top end if that's what you need. You need some plastic stuff. That pro line stuff is pretty good. I mean, that's that's a cut above, above a lot of them. It really is. Uh, pretty impressive, actually. <coughs> in fact, uh, Gus uh, Sawzilla told me today. He had some three three seventy two colors or covers, the starter covers, that was off color. They're like a deeper, almost maroon color. He says you probably don't want them to eat so many pictures. Says, you know what? I don't see anybody else have them. I says, let's work with that. Let's let's give it a go. But they're pretty good. And I can't wait to see what I can do with them colors. Interesting stuff coming up here, guys. There's a few things I can't tell you about, and there's a bunch that I can. As things progress, you'll you'll see what's going on. Those of you that ask, this is a big block Chevrolet with a 1050 uh, Dominator on it. Um, we are just got it mocked together right now. We've got parts. In fact, we were getting a crank today for it. Um, it started as an LS6, and uh, it's got the factory steel crank and dimple rods and stuff. In the factory domes, but and I had went through that and built that, and it was it's a nice motor, but we're going a little bigger. So we ordered a stroker crank. We're getting some really high quality rods with floating pins 
They actually, the pistons and rods we're putting in there work just like a chainsaw. You got sir clips. They're not press. And uh, domes. And then we got to send the heads out and get the valves seated in that. I've got to do some pocket porting on the heads. Uh, I want to. I don't have to. But I want to. And it's probably going in a 77 short box uh, step side to wheel drive. Uh, we're going to set it up as a drag truck. For foot brake racing, this is what we're doing. We are putting the two-speed glide in it with a trans brake. Okay, we're doing that and uh, with a two-step. And those of you who drag race know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's going to be a lot of fun. But we're building solid. We don't want to do this only once. This is what we want, solid. We may end up with, if we do some no prep racing down the road, we may end up with a 250-horse uh, shot of nitrous. That's why we have to upgrade the crank and everything, pistons. So we're doing that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that, to tell you the truth. I know a lot of you guys are. Um, the competition drag racing has always been really tight. It really has. Uh, so it's more about the fun than anything and getting your feet wet. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's a really relaxing kind of hobby. Got kind of a stiff uh, initial investment just like any other kind of racing it is that's why i play with these i can't afford to race anymore i i can play with soft like this have a grand old time and i'm loving it i got the best subscribers out there i uh i see so much out there of, of young channels that are growing and stuff which that's good but sort the information out guys that's the only thing i some of them know what they're doing some of them Quite frankly, don't. Uh, but they're learning. They're going to learn. They're going to learn. I'm not going to. I'm going to knock the young man at his game. I'm not. Uh, I was there once myself. And so weren't you. If you're my age. Or even a, a little bit younger. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll tell you. One saw that we're going to be doing here. Before too long. Is a 394. Okay. We're going to be doing a nice 394. So, and we're going to keep it a 394 and just work with what's there. Just like we did that uh, uh, stock bore 372 with the OEM piston and stuff. Which, that's an amazing saw. Hey, guys, you want to hear something funny? When I ran that saw, I didn't even realize this. I got to finish the muffler mount on that, too. That's another thing. I got to do that. Um. The decomp was leaking like a sieve. After I got done running, I, I, I see a little piece I had to trim off, so I restarted it. Well, I went just kind of give it a bump up. I heard a fit, fit, fit. I said, why is that decomp on? No, it wasn't on. So I pulled it out, and I screwed around with it. No, decomp, decomp leaking like a sieve. Freaking oil and fuel running right around the cylinder. So, with a failed decomp, that saw was running that good without having the muffler mod finished. Just a hole in the muffler, which is not good. That don't work. I think, I think we got a winner there. I really do. Um, now, what we've got right here, what you know I don't build little saws. In fact, to tell you the truth, I'm not even interested in them. I really ate, but this is kind of dusty. I got this out of, uh, of that, uh, in that collection of saws I got there a few days ago. But I'm going to tell you what happened to this. This one got straight gassed when it was new. Little MS-290. You don't get them much nicer than that. Missing the chain side cover. But I did find one. We'll just get a new one. It's a nice saw. Uh, Needs piston cylinder. <clears throat> I'm going to probably port it. I'm not going to ring a tang. I'm not going to try to see how much I can ring a 290's neck. I really ain't. But I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to get this running. I want to give it 15, 20% more power because I ran these. They're definitely better than an 025 or 026. 
but they're not like what I'm used to. Great example of a saw, though, isn't it? It really is. So, I got an idea after I run this a little bit. Of course, I don't mind that way. Maybe I ought to keep one of these little buggers around. I've got quite a few little saws now. But I thought about once I get this put together, we'll throw the stickers on and somebody's going to own this. Unless I like it that much. Let me know what you guys think of the 029. Is it a good fire? Is it a good old man saw? I'm used to 70 and 90 cc logging saws. Is my problem. My problem isn't strength. I'm dang strong enough. My problem is mobility. Uh, walking is hard for me. Like today, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not doing as good as I normally do with that storm coming in. It really ain't. So we got a great core builder right here, don't we? Yes, we do. Now in that mess, I got an 039, which I'd never seen to build, and an 029 Super, which I didn't know existed. So we definitely have some interesting contact coming up uh, with some of these weird little saws. But I think I think I can make something good out of this. Guys, I'm tired. I gotta carry this wood in. And I gotta pull the electric cords up out of the driveway that run the fencer. Uh, because I know I'm gonna plow tomorrow. Um we may have a video tomorrow or we may not. I'm still waiting on more parts for a pretty little resurrection saw build. And uh so that that's gonna be that. But I gotta get some wood in here because quite frankly, this fires out. And it's 30 degrees, but high humidity, it's damp. So, I got to go in there and get near that wood fire. That's what I got to do. Have a great day. Have an awesome tomorrow. And uh, bless you guys for showing up. Thank you. Goodbye.